teacher. A teacher of what? Mysteries. From the best-selling author, Jonathan Kahn, who brought us The Harbinger and the Mystery of the Shemitah, comes a life-changing journey to uncover the mysteries of God. When you open the Book of Mysteries, you'll be transported on a journey through a desert to encounter a man known only as the Teacher, who will take you on an odyssey each day, revealing to you new mysteries of spiritual truth, end times revelation, and the secrets of overcoming this world. Explore all 365 mysteries in this unique daily devotional written to captivate your mind and bring you a unique, mystical, Christian, and historical perspective of God's work in this universe. One of the first mysteries in, the, in this book is about God. Yes. Elohim. Yes. I don't say anything, right? So, you said that perfectly. I did I? Perfect, perfect, My perfect first Hebrew. Time. Perfect Hebrew. I should have gone to Hebrew school. That's okay. <laughs> no, you you went for me, right? Yeah. Um, yeah this Can you is, talk yeah, about that? Yeah, yeah. This is very quick, and I'll show you how, yeah. I mean, about the depth, about how deep and simple yet deep. Okay, very first, very first noun. One of the things is called the Elohim mystery in the book. The very first noun of the Bible, very first, is Elohim. It says, it says, Birashit bara Elohim. In the beginning created God. God created the heavens and the earth. That's it. First noun throughout the Bible. Elohim, God. Yeah, and that's what we think about this all the time, but we miss, right in that first word is a mystery. Right in that, because first of all, you know, Jewish people for years said, you know, this thing about Christianity, you say God is three, we don't believe that, we believe God is one, one, well God is one, God is three. But the very first word of the Bible, Elohim, is not a singular word, it's a plural word. It is saying God is plural, very first word. Yeah. In fact, it's translated in other places as gods. When it's not in that context, it literally means gods, but there's one God. But the very first word of the Bible doesn't make any sense because it says it's a plural word with a singular verb. It, does, it breaks the law from the beginning, breaks grammar from the beginning. <laughs> God, so the first thing it's telling you is the mystery is right there. God is the mystery from the beginning. He's, he, it's God, it's the triune nature of God yes. right there. There. But not only that, there's something else in the Hebrew. When you see that happen, it doesn't just mean plural. When a plural is used where it should be a singular, what it means is that what it's talking about is so colossal, awesome, that words cannot express what it's talking about. So the, every time you say Elohim for God, and it's plural, what you're saying every time, what it's saying is the word in English or Hebrew cannot contain how big this thing is, how great this is. It's saying that God is so great, so awesome, so colossal, so beyond that there is no word that can do it. So we're going to put a word that makes, that go, breaks the bounds to begin with. So what it's saying is that no matter how much you think you know God, how much I think I know God, we don't know the half of it. We don't know, we don't know the first, the, we don't know the, the big, the, the big uh, toe of God because there's so much more. And that's why there, there's one, there's one mystery I just thought of that goes on where, where the, in the book, the teacher takes the disciple into the room, the chamber of books and says, well, how long do you think it would take to just know this one book, like inside out? The guy says, well, maybe a month, you know. Okay, how about the whole bookshelf? Well, maybe a year. How about all the chamber of books? He says, well, it would take lifetimes. He says, that's why you have eternity. That's why heaven is eternal. Because that's how long it takes to know God. Oh, Forever. Wow. <laughs> Forever. <Yes. laughs> the very first one. That's the first one. Now, now, Don't uh, you want to be on the side of the eternal God? Yes. These people that are mocking God, they're peons. Forgive me. Can I use that word? <laughs> Jim Baker they're, show. You can say what you uh, want. No, but I mean, they're, they're nothing. They are mocking God. And we've got this amazing God, this triune God, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, and, and, and from the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning. The, here, uh, another one is called the, in the book, is called the East-West Continuum. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you what this is. This is so there in the Bible, yet, you, yet it's so beyond. The, the, every time God, when God said set up the tabernacle and the temple, every, everything had to be set up 
on an east-west continuum. Everything had to face east. If you go, you know, the Holy of Holies, the altar, all that, whenever you went from, was all on an east-west plane. Everything was east-west. Everything had to be exactly east-west. Golden Gate of the Temple, it's the eastern gate. Where, where Messiah is coming back, it's the east, he comes back there. Where, the, where Ezekiel sees the glory go out from the temple, goes from the, goes from the west to the east, he's gonna come back from the east to the west. When, when, you, go to, when you go into the Holy of Holies, you're going east-west. When you come out from the Holy of Holies, east-west. When you sacrifice the, the altar, on the altar, you know, that for salvation, that's east the, everything is east-west. Everything had to be east-west no matter what. So what's the mystery there? Well, it's so cool because here, here's what it is. And you could not have known it back then because even the Greeks didn't know it back then. The reason why God said it has to be exactly east-west, everything, this is all about salvation, east-west, because the earth is a sphere, it's astrophysics. Only God would have known it back then. <laughs> sure. It's a sphere. It's not a, it's not a map like everybody thought. It's a sphere. So what that means is, and it turns, it has an axis on top of the bottom, north, south. It turns east to west all the time. So therefore, if you go to the north, all north ends at the North Pole. When you get to the North Pole, it's over. And then if you go south, all south ends at the South Pole. So north to west is a few thousand miles. That's it. So if he separated your sins north to west, oh. it's a few thousand miles away. But east, if you go east and west, there's no end. There's no east pole. It's infinite. East is infinite. Oh, west oh. is infinite. West is oh, infinite. God, there's God. no end to it. There's no end. So that's why, because the temple's all about, all about how much God loves you. There's no end. It's east-west. There's no end to how much God loves you. There's no end to how far he's removed our sins. The scapegoat would go oh. into the east, taking oh. his sins away. Oh. Wait, wait, there's, no, there's no end. And, nobody, and, and so, this, so put it all together. And so it says in the Psalms, I mean, they put it together. Man couldn't have known no, that man, when you, this no, was not written even, down. Not even the Greeks knew this. No, I mean, back then, yeah. this is way beyond, but God knew it. Yeah. And so that, and, and listen, even if it was, even if it was slightly off, like say it was northwest or east, south, you know, mm -hmm. it would end up on the south. Ultimately, it would circle around until it gets to the pole. So, so it had to be exactly mm -hmm. because it's infinite. <laughs> and so what does it say in Psalm 103? It says, as far as, as the east, east is from, from the west, west, so far has he removed our sins from us. Whoa! How far does he love us Whoa! from the east? East of the West. Give God a hand <laughs> for that. Did you get what he just taught us? Yes. Our sins are removed infinity yes. away. Yes. It, that's why he said that. Yes. Oh, that's if he said so any other direction, there's no, what happened? There's no wall at the east or the west. Yes. If it was north and south, it would be waiting for us in the, in the, on the ice. Our sins would be on ice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, man. It's forever. Isn't it great, though, yeah. to know that? Even the sacrifices, you know, think about this. Every sacrifice on that altar, which represents Jesus, all of that took place on that same continuum, which means he, his sacrifice is infinite. His sacrifice, mm. his love is infinite for yes. us on the cross. Love it. Wow. And then and what page is it in it's, their book? Because everybody's going to get the book, oh, yeah. right? Everybody yes. has the book. Page so what 13, page? Page 13. It's a 13th page 13. day of the journey. Well, it's the 13th day, day of the journey. journey. Yeah. It's not a... The teacher explaining to the disciple. It's not an unlucky day. That's, a, that's your lucky day when you discover your sins are <laughs> oh, far yes. removed yes. as far as the east is from the west. They're, they're, wa they're watching a sunrise over the desert. That's what begins that. But yeah. Yes. Some of the, the mysteries in the book, have, also it opens up some of the hidden mysteries in the writings of the rabbis that even the rabbis don't realize what it means and I don't think they, they may not want us to, to do it but but ha that's all biblical and I'll, I'll tell you one of them it, okay. it's called the scepter of Judah mm -hmm. and it's a, one of them and the scepter of Judah is this when Judah was blessed by Jacob he gave a blessing the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes if you remember that's where you get the word Shiloh from so in other words Judah is going to become the kingly tribe it's going to rule it's going to have the scepter which it does it's a it's a it's David's line it's Messiah's line but it says so, but here's the thing it says the scepter shall not depart until Shiloh comes now now the rabbis wrote down in the in the it's in their writings you wouldn't you know you may not wouldn't know it but it's there it says that that what they're saying is they're saying this the, Shiloh is the Messiah in the book of Sanhedrin which is the same body that judged Jesus as, as not the Messiah, in their book, in the Talmud, it records this. It records that all of a sudden, at one point in history, they lost the scepter. The Sanhedrin was lost its power over life and death. It, it was taken away. So, it, so in other words, they said that's when Messiah should have come. The rabbis are saying the Messiah should have come, then we lost it. But here's the thing. 
here's the thing. It gives the time, it gives the year that they lost it. It says, when did this, when did the scepter depart from Judah? That means Messiah had to come by that date. Whoever Messiah is, he had to come. It says 40 years before the destruction of the temple. In other words, the scepter departed in 30 AD. Just at the time, that, wow. that means Messiah had to come about the year. According to the rabbis, according to the Sanhedrin, the Messiah had to come by the year, about the year 30 AD. And that's exactly, there's only one in history hmm. who just happened to come, who is the king, and then the scepter departed, Messiah Yeshua Jesus. Even the rabbis are saying he's the Messiah. Even the Sanhedrin doesn't realize it, it's saying he's the Messiah. Wow. That's all there. Amazing. Wow. All there. All That's there. powerful, people. Wow. There's no words. <laughs> now, I want to open up. Now, this is uh, to get a little bit more deep into it, and we have, this is where we have the, we have the t full teaching on it, the CD thing. But right. how real the Bible is and how real history, mm -hmm. how real the enemy is as well. Mm -hmm. It's called The Mystery of the Wolves. That's, oh. that's, in, that's in that album. But it's yes. also, there's a little thing on, uh, in, in the book. Here, here's the thing. You know, in the Bible, God is, God is the, called the shepherd. He's mm -hmm. the shepherd of Israel. Messiah is the good shepherd. He's yes. the shepherd. Yes. Israel is called the flock of God. Now, in Messiah, in we who are born again are also God's flock, obviously. But the first flock was Israel. He says, this is my flock. You know, now, though, now actually, in, in the book of mysteries, what, where it is, is that they're watching. The teacher and the disciple are, it's getting dark, and they're watching a shepherd in the desert with a the, with the flock. And as he goes off, they see a wolf trailing the flock. So that brings up the mystery of the wolf. Now, now the wolf is the enemy of the flock. The wolf is the enemy of the shepherd. Who is the wolf? What's the wolf speaking of? It's speaking of Satan. He is the, he is the, he's ravenous. He's deceptive. He wants to destroy every work of God if he could. And what does a, what does a wolf do? A wolf, a wolf, though their strategy is the first, they try to hem the flock in. They try to herd the flock and get it into a place where they can't get out, where they're trapped. They panic. They get, they sow confusion. That's what they do. They actually sow confusion. But also they will try to separate the weak. Anything that's weak, they'll go for it. They'll separate the weak. If a, any, any sheep that is away from the flock, they'll try to, if you're away from the, the flock, they'll try to go for it. They'll separate the, they'll try to separate the young from the mother, the old or the lame or the weak. That's what they, they try to separate it and they try to strike it. Well, the Bible says that Messiah, it's a prophecy. If the shepherd is struck down, the sheep will be scattered. The, so here, what happens if a shepherd is struck down? Right. The sheep will wander off. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be vulnerable to the wolf, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the predators. 2,000 years ago, Messiah, who is the shepherd, who is the true shepherd, struck down. The sheep of Israel were separated from their, from their, from their shepherd. Mm -hmm. What happened? So think about it. How, you want to talk about proof of, of Messiah? What happened? They're vulnerable. They're, they're attacked, attacked, attacked by the, by the wolves. Even back in That's Ezekiel, right. Ezekiel, God says, my flock wandered the earth and all the beasts of the field attacked them and devoured them until I came for them myself. Now, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. how real the Bible is, how real God is, how real the enemy is, how real this thing is. Who were the greatest predators of the Jewish people in history? The Nazis were. Right. The greatest. I mean, yes. the, 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 the most, the most terrible, you know, to, to attack the flock. The Nazis attacked the flock. Mm -hmm. I looked into this. This is since we were last here. Fascinating thing. Looked into it and deeper into it. And first of all, first of all, their strategy was that of the wolf. What do they do? They rounded up the flock. They rounded up the Jewish people. They transported them. They used terror. And what did they do when they got to those camps? They separated the weak. They separated the old. They separated the mothers from the children. They mm -hmm. did exactly what wolves do. Mm -hmm. Wolves. But here, the, the, look deeper. The founder of the Nazi party, the German's worker party was called, what, one of Hitler's idols was a man named Karl. His last name was Wolf. It was Karl Wolf. Wolf founded that. The, he persuaded that. The, the, one, of the, one of the key founders who came up with the name Nazi Party was named Rudolf Jung. Rudolf means wolf. The chief of staff of the SS named Karl Wolf. The commander of the SS in Crimea was also, his name meant wolf. Hitler's secretary was named Johanna Wolf. The SS commandment of Auschwitz was, was called the wolf. I mean, on and on, the, the deputy, right, Rudolf Hess, famous Nazi under Hitler, was called, his name means the wolf. When I looked at a, a, a list of the worst Nazis, you see the name wolf again oh and again man. and again. You have, who was the head of it? Who was the worst enemy? Hitler. Yeah. Hitler was. Well, first of all, Hitler, one of the things about it, he named, he was, he named his headquarters, he named it Wolfschanz. 
He named another one Wolf Sloop. He named, he named another one Werewolf. He, it, it's, where he stayed during the war was called the Wolf's Lair. It was called the Wolf's Glen. He, stayed, he called his submarines the Wolf Packs. Well, in, in an Austrian village, a woman named Clara has a baby, calls him Adolphus or Adolf. Adolf means the wolf. Oh. Adolf <laughs> means the wolf. The wolf. And so hear how real the Bible is. And then God says, when he says they're going to be attacked by all their enemies, but then he says, on that day, he says, I'm going to come looking for my flock, and on that day, I'm going to bring them back to Israel. I'm going to bring them back. The shepherd. And it's amazing. It's just when the wolf dies, when the when Nazis are defeated, when the wolves are, that's when God brings them all back to the land of Israel, the land of Israel. And in the end, the, you know, the ultimate thing is, you know, you know, the ultimate thing is, so, so number one, this is real. We've yeah, got a real yeah. enemy, and we have to know it. We've got a real enemy. Number two, though, it, with all that, in the end, God, the shepherd, wins. In the end, there's not a wolf on the throne. There's the lamb on the throne. I mean, that, that's yes. crazy. Yes. Yes. The lamb's on Amen. the throne. In the end, he wins. In the right. end, still, still, with all that, with all that, all the wolves are going to be defeated. All the, the wolf is going to be defeated. But Israel is alive today because the shepherd of Israel lives. Because Messiah is still there. He's still the, he's the one who gathered them. But not just the father. The son has gathered them back to his womb. So be encouraged, too, because if you fight, you're going to prevail. You're going to prevail. Amen. So, and, you know, you, ha you actually have this in your book on page 252. Yes. The mystery of the wolf. And... And you say the mission for that day that the teacher is teaching the disciple. The mission is this. Today, stay as far away from temptation as you can and as close to the Lord. Far from the wolf and near to the shepherd. What, what is the greatest safety in God is stay close to the shepherd. In this book, you talk about temptation and uh, the door Okay. Do you remember that one? And it is so amazing. And this one I love because how do you deal with temptation, he asked. You resist it. Yes, he said, but how? I didn't answer. I didn't know what he was looking for. The book of Proverbs reveals how to deal with the temptation of sexual sin. The seduction of an adulteress. It is written, keep your way far from her. That means what you do. And do not come near to the door of her house. Mm -hmm. What does that reveal? Stay away from temptation. The best way to deal with temptation is to not deal with it. Mm -hmm. he said, I don't good. understand. Huh. He, he says, if you keep yourself away from the temptation, there's less chance of being tempted. But the scripture goes further than that. Listen again. It says, keep your way far from her and do, do not come near to the door it says in other words stay away from the door meaning that the way to deal the best way to deal with with sin and temptation is stay away from the door of it not just the temptation because you know you might he might be the guy might be tempted tempted by the adulteress but nobody's gonna be tempted by a door right. stay away from the yeah. thing that might even lead to that yeah, before you even get there stay away from the situation stay away from the thing that yeah. will lead to the next step that don't leads even get, to it don't even That's get up what... against the wall put your hedges like that and you'll never have to deal with it it says yeah. the mission i love the mission for the day <laughs> yes I do today too. make it your aim not just to avoid temptation but to avoid even the door that leads to it. That's so good. Isn't that good? Yeah. yeah. This is good teaching. Oh, so good. You.